All right, welcome to the weekly gaming quick save show. We're going to live 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday right here on twitch.tv slash benreacts. That's right, reacts. Still happening. On this week's show, we're going to review Uncharted 3 because, I don't know, what else am I going to do? Also going to talk about the 30th anniversary of Zelda and what that series means to me. It is why I got into gaming, so it's very important. And it's very self-indulgent to talk about it. But first, let's look at some of the top stories of the week. One of the biggest pieces of news, No Man's Sky finally has a release date after about 16 years of just wheeling us in with a fishing pole here. June 21st, PC and PS4 for $60, which is probably a little more than you thought you were going to spend on the game. And I'm still a little hesitant on it, even though I am very excited for the game. It's just, what's the loop here? What's happening? I, I don't know. A little hesitant, especially with $60. Who knows what's going on? It looks damn fine, though. And that's an impressive little, I don't know if you can resist that candy bar. It's basically what I'm saying. I don't know. But something we should be maybe a little a little concerned about, Uncharted, uh, Naughty Dog has said that they've changed the story 100%, whatever that means, from when series writer Amy Henning left the studio. That's a little worrying to me, but it, it might be fine, but then they delay the game for two weeks, which is a strange move, especially considering they just delayed it about a month ago already. So if you wanted, they're saying it's for a worldwide release, and that's fine and dandy, but if you wanted to have a worldwide release, why didn't you just make it for the first delay? Why are you now delaying it another two weeks and then being like, oh, it's worldwide? It, it could be true, and in, in hell, it probably is. Who knows? But it's a little weird. The game probably be fine. It's just a little weird. Also, there's a multiplayer beta this weekend. Mm -hmm. Is that related? Who the hell knows? No one knows anything that's going on. But that's, this game has had crazy development. Crazy. And I'm tired of hearing about it. Now, moving on to uh, a bigger subject, Harmonix has launched a fig campaign to kickstart, to fund, that's going to get hard to not do, Rock Band 4 on the PC. And they're, they're putting in half a million of their own money, and the rest of the money, 1.5 million, is from the fans. They've currently raised uh, just over, it's like 330,000 they still have a month ago. This is another strange move in a series of strange moves for Harmonix that I think signal this company isn't doing so well. So let's actually look at this, go back in time on a little journey here. They had Guitar Hero, great. They had Rock Band, great. That all ended with Rock Band 3 in 2010. After that, they went and did two or three, I'm not sure, Dance Central games, which I, I, I were successful, but who really cares? Then we move on to Fantasia, that they made on Xbox One, and, I mean, does anyone remember Fantasia? Does anyone give a shit? No. And part of the problem is that by the time it finally came out, it was a Kinect game on an Xbox that didn't have to come with a Kinect. And how over the Kinect are we? So this is the first little uh, hit for them, that not looking so good. Then we move on to Amplitude. Now, Amplitude had to be kickstarted, despite the fact that Sony had some kind of involvement. Then, when the game does come out, after being successfully funded, it has very few, if any, I'm not sure, I don't really care to look up, licensed tracks, which cost money. That's strange. There's a lot of strange going on with that. Then we move back to Rock Band 4, which comes out with a lot of problems. And things like uh, the DLC from other games, or the, the export from other games, Rock Band 2, Rock Band 3, they don't all work yet. And this is six months after release, looking a little funny there, not to mention that Mad Cats, the publisher, laid off 37% of its workforce after underperforming sales of Rock Band 4. That's, that's another hit in the armor. And then we go back to now, where they're funding Rock Band 4 on PC. I think they have big problems, and they're just kind of slowly dying. It's concerning, but I don't know what the hell else they do. They've been a music game publisher this whole time, and they're not. I don't think they're doing hot at all. And it's kind of a bummer, since I love Guitar Hero and Rock Band's fine. But 
I don't know if they're even going to make their goal for this. It's not looking that great. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's not good. I don't want to be bad news bearer. It's not looking good. Let's move on to actual, uh, maybe maybe happier news with the Nintendo Direct, which took place yesterday. As a big Nintendo fan, this is, this is, uh, uh, I mean, you watch these Nintendo Directs, and it oscillates for me between like, ooh, cool, and oh, god, no. And that's, that's what this was. That's what all this Direct was. It's, yeah, it's a something. So let's just, not to go over everything, let's start with Star Fox, which I think looks better visually. Definitely. It seems more cell shaded. Looks a lot better. The controls look to be maybe classic now, which is nice to see. Who knows? Still waiting on that. I would love to get a good Star Fox game. It's been 10 years. It's crazy. The amount of games that aren't good Star Fox games outnumber the good ones at this point. I can't. I can't deal with it. Let's oscillate to good. Mario Maker. Loving Mario Maker. I'm playing it on Twitch. People submit their levels. I play it. Great time. I'm loving the new items. This is going to be awesome. Cannot wait to see what happens. It's going to be ridiculous. Completely forgot about the crazy death spikes. Completely forgot about them. And now, a little scared. Then we oscillate back to Paper Mario on the Wii U. Which, why now, of all times, the last Paper Mario didn't do that great. It wasn't that great. I mean, based on reviews, a what is why are you doing this now it, this is like two years late i don't understand i don't understand the reasoning here and i don't understand the reasoning most of the time so i guess that's it's fitting then uh -huh. who knows what they do speaking of who knows what they do let me look off my thing tokyo mirage sessions fe i forget if it's like a hashtag or a, it's the shittiest name this is the worst name for any game in a long time i've seen i will play this for sure it's got cute anime girls, and it's got a JRPG combat system, so I'm there for all of that. 100%. 100% of the way, that sounds good to me. That's just me. Then we oscillate again to Metroid Prime Federation Force, which is, in the same way you can feel tension in a room, people just fought, you can, you can cut the tension with a knife, this apology and the way they presented this game was so obvious. This was this was eight months late damage control, and it was it was just gushing out of the screen. Too much, too much. And I'm fine with them making a stupid Metroid game. It's painful. It's really painful to make a shitty, stupid Metroid game that doesn't even have the music, that barely even has the enemies, that doesn't look like it plays anything like Metroid. Maybe Metroid Prime Hunters, it's only tangentially related to Samus. <laughs> it fits firmly in the universe. Oh, that's great. That's what I wanted. Not an actual good game. That's what I wanted. I wanted garbage. Thank you. I just don't... I just don't understand what Nintendo does. Or why they thought this... Why they thought this would go over well. <laughs> that's the question. How did you think this was going to go over well? Because this... It's a something. It's a big something. But happy news, Kirby in a giant mech suit fighting other things. I'm down with that. The mech suit changes when you pick up powers. Loving it. Never going to play the game, but I love the idea of a giant pink ball in a mech suit. I think we can get behind that. Again, there was a lot of 3DS in this, in this presentation for this, you know, these are this year's games. But if the NX is this really hybrid device, why are there so many? What's the NX going to have? You're blowing your load all over the place. <sighs> the Nintendo that I love is, is somewhere deep inside this Nintendo. Uh, it's, it's upsetting. That's what it is. But with all that out of the way, let's get into the topics of the week. Oh, Kirby Robot. It's a cool title too, Robot, Abot, Abot, Abot. Down for that. Totally down for that. Oh, it's time to review something that came out 10 years ago. Not really. Uncharted 3. Now, I'm not the biggest Uncharted fan, but I've never played 3. And so I decided to play it. I got the HD remaster, whatever. 
and I start taking my notes down. And my notes read more like a crazy person who's trying to play Uncharted because this series, especially after playing the Tomb Raider games, is so overrated to me. Oh, let's go back. That's a good point. The rumor about the NX, you hope that's wrong? A powerful box of controller. Snow Cone Guy, I'm going to talk to you, because I like you. Uh, but it's the rumor I want to be true about the NX is that it's literally a box that connects to a PS4 or to a PC or to anything. That's what I want. Like, I don't, uh, we're going to go back to NX. I, I don't, I'm tired, they, they make good software. They don't make good hardware. Just stop. Maybe make a handheld. The idea of this hybrid, it just sounds like something for them to fuck up. Honestly. It just like, it sounds like something they're going to ruin and destroy. They have, there's a, a big steep downhill with all their hardware sales, but their software, software sells great. I mean, the, the Mario Kart 8 sold like 5 million or something, and there's only 11, 12 million we use in the world. That's crazy. That's a crazy attach rate. So they make great games for the most part. Last year they kind of slipped a little. But this other, this, this hybrid, they're going to make it. I don't buy they can do it. They've shown zero evidence they can do it successfully. And it's really bumming me out. Look how much Zelda garbage I got. It's bumming me out. I'm going back to Uncharted now. This is hell. The show, this is going to be a mess. Giant mess. But I agree, powerful box with controller. Okay, we're back to Uncharted. Although when I edit this, it will never look like I left Uncharted. After playing the Tomb Raider games and coming into Uncharted in kind of a weird backwards roundabout way, this, these games aren't that great. I, I understand they're, the problem, <laughs> there's a lot of problems I have in Uncharted. The, the big takeaway from me playing Uncharted was there are moments that are so fucking good. Uh, when you're on the ship and it's, it's sinking and there's all these, the, you're jumping on boats and, or when you're in the desert on the horseback, jumping on the cars. Those moments are so good. Some of the best gaming moments ever had. Gaming. Circular sentence. And then, and then there's, there's these other moments that are just so poor. Uh, for example, the melee combat I don't think is that great. It's actually kind of aggravating. I'm never, I, I don't know why, hey zombie, I don't know why the, the, um, the reticle for the quick time events in the combat, so you press triangle to dodge their attack and hit them. Why the fuck is it way over here? Oh, let's put that, you know where I'd like to put the quick time event, uh, icon? Let's put it way over there. It's so that I can't, I'm like trying to fight someone over here, I can't even see it. I don't understand why you do that, and not to mention, the combat isn't that fun. It's not that good. And the Batman, if to make that comparison, the Batman combat isn't that good either. So I don't understand what they're doing. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to move on that because what you do in this game is you shoot a lot of shit. Move down here to another picture. There, there's. I'm just going to go through my notes because I played through the game and I took notes on, on what's going on. And I got st the first when you're... Is that a spo I don't know. I, I'm spoiling it. Doesn't matter. Who gives a fuck? The first time you you uh, are able to traverse something as young Drake, I got stuck for like 15 minutes, not knowing where to go because I wasn't pressing the control stick in the exact direction it wanted me to go. the The idea of this this game's traversal is done so much better in I want to say Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time. Like it is baffling how many times in this game I didn't quite know where to go or where to jump to or when you're being chased and oh do I turn left oh nope I died okay I guess I turn right I don't know how the fuck I was supposed to know that or when you're running at the screen those are terrible and they remind me of Banjo Kazooie <laughs> or not Banjo Kazooie fuck Crash Bandicoot same same animal 
because they made those games, and they're bad. Those are bad sequences that, that don't make any sense in this game that is so polished. Everything else is so fucking polished. Like the animation, the acting in these cutscenes. It's so polished. And then they, it just shits all over itself for these sequences where you're running against the camera, which the camera is not zoomed out enough. You have no idea what's happening. It's basically trial and error. You make it and it's cool. Tomb Raider does these sequences ten times better on its worst try. On its worst try. And it's funny too, because half the time those sequences are good and fine. And the other half the time, they're really bad. The same is true of the shooting, which I've always thought Uncharted has too much shooting. This game's a little better and it kind of has long sections of not shooting, and then it's long sections of shooting. And I never, I never quite buy, like there's a scene in the game where Drake gives Elena a gun. And she's like, I hope I don't have to use this. And literally, 30, oh no, actually maybe it was a couple hours ago, the day before in the game, she helped me murder 50 people, at least. Not to mention the two other games she's in where she's murdering people. No one in these games acknowledged the fact that you're straight up a homicidal maniac that maybe you should be stealthy. That brings to the other problem. The stealth is awful. When it works, it's great. When it doesn't work, it's terrible. Because the combat is so not fun to play. When it works, it works. And when it doesn't work, it's terrible. And what I, what I mean by when it doesn't work is when you have these big enemies that are super armored, they take like three grenades to kill, and they just walk over to you really slowly. And they, and they just kind of go behind your cover. The game is a cover shooter, but these guys just go behind the cover they don't care. And they just one-shot you with a shotgun. Well, thanks, game. Thanks for making your AI understand what I'm doing. I don't understand how I'm supposed to fight you. Half these encounters at some points in the game where I got stuck for a little while, I only won because I accidentally... The AI just happened to work right, or I got one good hit off. It wasn't because of I was skilled, or I found the right hiding spot, or I found the right weapon. It was luck. That's the problem with it. It was all luck. And... And these sequences, each one of them has at least five to ten too many guys to kill. And it, I don't understand, and I wonder if this has anything to do with why Amy, Hen Amy, Hen Amy Hennig left. Because she's writing these interesting stories with these characters that are monsters and they're murdering people. And, and I would rather the game, um, like the last Tomb Raider, not to spoil it, but... You not you're not killing that many guys, and you're not killing technically people that are alive at the end. They're not zombies. Well, no, they're not zombies, and that's fine. I'm fine with killing something that's not humans because I can rationalize that from the character's point of view. But when you're straight up murdering thirty dudes and then jumping onto a horse and then blowing up some tank and then jumping onto another horse, I don't know why the horses are involved. It it's just weird. All right, I'm going back to my notes. I'm going back to my notes. Oh, oh, the, the puzzles. Where's my puzzle screenshot? Oh my god. There's so many cool... That's the fucking problem. This goddamn puzzle. Okay. It's, it's so obtuse. But I can figure it out. And I solved it. That's fine. They, they like to give you a hint system, but they don't give you any hints. The hints in this game, for example, for this puzzle, is literally... It restates the puzzle. That's the first hint. Okay, that's a fair hint. Maybe I forgot. The second hint... <laughs> the second hint is... Do you want to know the answer? No! I want a fucking hint! That's why I'm pressing the hint button. And going back to this one... It doesn't... Doing the solving the puzzle involves this convoluted mechanism that isn't fun. So when you fuck up, you then have to figure out... And it takes a minute to reset the puzzle. To where you... And we, I, it, there's, that's the thing. It's like this game got a, a, a very good reviews, and I don't understand how am I the only one who's like, this is a problem. This is a problem. There were some instances where Sully was blocking the way, and I'm like running into him. Make a gif of that. I'm running into him, and he's not moving out of the way. And I go to jump, and Drake does this weird jump animation. I'm like, this is a, this is a 10 out of 10 for people. This game is fucking broken sometimes. And 
like you're jumping or or the times when you're you're not allowed to jump there or you got to jump where we want you to jump if you jump there you die but but i only fell like 10 feet yeah but you can't jump there over here that's the 10 feet where you can jump i know it's confusing just jump here what i don't think that's the thing i don't think they are paid reviews i think i'm just way too critical <laughs> on things some i mean some reviews might be sure i but say as a thing that that's a whole se separate subject on paid reviews it's a whole separate subject actually hey zoo hope i remembered to pronounce your name correctly i'm going to complain about uncharted for the next 20 minutes because good god let's uh, here's more of my notes oh part of the problem with this too is you're with so many people you're with sully for the majority of the game he's always great i love sully but having him there there's they're constantly talking and they're constantly saying stupid shit too like we just gotta open this door hey jake pull this lever and it's like all right that's like not even an impression it's just a weird thing why why just why why when you're alone and you're drake like on the ship part great fantastic i loved it Make Drake be alone. Let him be an adventurer. Let him be the mass murderer. Not every single fucking person he owns. He, he owns? He knows. We're going to go back again to my notes. Chloe adds nothing. And Chloe is, in fact, so forgettable, I forgot she was in Uncharted 2 entirely. Completely forgot about her. I don't know how, how there's any argument of Chloe versus Elena. That's a stupid thing. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm, I'm, my notes my notes are literally this the only hint is to solve the puzzle go fuck yourself these are the notes i take i love that but then there's these other these other great moments that i'm like why are why is like this game could have been half as long it could have been amazing or just make it easier i'm not even saying i want easy games or that the game was too difficult the game was just like all over the place critical as well that most games get bad reviews i enjoy them you know, that's true. I like to see reviews, and I like to see review scores. And I, and I look for particular reviewers in some cases of like, oh, I know this guy's reviews. This is how he feels about it. I'll probably feel similarly. Or even like JRPG reviews, I don't even read. I don't even look at them. Unless it's from like some super hardcore JRPG fan site, the majority of them are god-awful. There's a game uh, called Natural Doctrine that is a strategy RPG that is... People like to say it's the Dark Souls of, of strategy RPGs. It's phenomenal. It does not hold your hand, and it probably should a little. And that game got shit on in the reviews, like threes out of ten. And I loved it to death. So, you know, review is just a personal opinion anyway. Uh, but it, it's it's just funny how some things like that happen. But particularly with Uncharted, this this game is is great. Like, this game's an eight. You know, it's an 8 overall, but it's got some, like, 6, 5 moments. Let me go back. I'm going through my notes. My notes are just, like, this rambling... <laughs> rambling... Oh, that's right, too. The cover. This is a... Oh, my God. This is a third-person shooter, right? For half of it. And it's a cover shooter, right? But the cover controls are terrible. Because the same button to dive is the same button to snap for cover. So there'd be several times where I want to dive out of the way and go behind a pillar. But instead, I snap to the pillar and the guy with the shotgun's like, oh, well, thanks for not really moving so I can shoot you in the face. That's not good. Furthermore, in the tutorial, it says you can go from cover to cover by pressing the same button, circle. And you can wrap around pillars, you know, wrap around right angles. I never once got that to work. <laughs> I never once got it to work except in the tutorial. I have no idea how it works. And quite frankly, if this was a cover shooter, I would love it a lot more. But it isn't. Half the enemies run at you like psychopaths, and the other half, you have to get out of cover to shoot. Because you're going to run out of ammo. It, it's all over the place. Yeah, people come to you for use. That, that's good. It, I, I trust the kind of the hive mind, more or less. I want to hear from a fan, and I want to hear from a not fan of the series. You know, because there is value in, like, I'm a big Resident Evil guy, and I'll, I'll talk your ear off about how good Resident Evil 6 is, even though it's got a lot of problems. But I also want to hear from someone who's not into the series, you know. It's, it's good to get diverse viewpoints. You shouldn't go to one review. 
and be like, oh, I guess this is my opinion now. I'm done thinking. la de do. One final note about Uncharted. Uh, the first two Uncharted's end with a mystical thing. The first one like turns into a survival horror game almost has like these weird zombie pigmen or something. That's what I remember them being. And the second one has blue people that are drinking some weird juice. The third one just has a weird hallucination, which I'm fucking finally. Stop making this. Oh, all of a sudden magic's real. Could you could you not make magic magic real all of a sudden? Drive me insane. Why did I just become your best friend? I love friends. That's not true. That's not a good show. It's overrated. Just spit water all over myself. Tell me tell me why, because it's about Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 6 is a good fucking game. And we will talk about that. Resident Evil 6. I'm not, I don't even care if that's what you're talking about. Resident Evil 6 is four campaigns. Now. Are they all, do they have bad parts? Oh god yeah. Oh god yeah. Oh man. The part with peers where you're, um, where you were captured? God awful. God awful. Just, just, some of the, a lot of the Ada stuff is terrible. But man. Oh that's right, you were streaming Resident Evil the other day. I fucking love Resident Evil. But there's so many moments in Resident Evil 6 that are so, Fucking good. I talked about this last week, actually. Uh, when Chris fights the giant snake that's invisible, half of Leon's campaign, which is, which a section of it borderlines on a remake of Resident Evil 2. Are you kidding me? It's got the best gameplay. It's got the best mercenaries mode, first of all. Mercenaries mode that is phenomenal. Especially if you play it on PC, there's, they added more zombies in. And there's like 30, 40 zombies just running at you. Love it. Love it. Love it to death. Oh my god. Resident Evil 6 is great. I would argue, I would rather play Resident Evil 6 over Uncharted. Any Uncharted. Because I know what I'm getting with that game. With Uncharted, all over the goddamn place. Now, I do like the pacing of, oh, we're doing puzzles now, and then we're shooting now, and then we're doing platforming. It's too all over the place. Half of it's not that great. They're, they straight up drop Chloe and Cutter and never bring them up again. I guess they're not important? Okay. What do you think of the upcoming remakes? What upcoming remakes? The, the PS... The, the next... The current gen ones? They're just the PC ports. That's all they are. Guaranteed. They're, all the, they're just the PC ports. As far as like a remake of Resident Evil 2? God, I'm there. Just... Wow. I'm there for that. I'm there for a remake of 3. Code Veronica? Mm. I'm there for when they finally remake 4. And all they need to do to remake 4 is the graphics, obviously, and the inventory, and make it a where you can't pause. And keep the controls, keep it the same. That's it. That's all I need to do. Fucking love. People give Capcom a lot, a lot of shit. And they do some weird shit, sure. But Resident Evil? Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Resident Evil 4 may have been an accident. That they accidentally made the best game of all time. But it's the best fucking game of all time. <laughs> so even if it is an accident. They're not remastering. Yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. They're not remastering them. They're porting them. They're straight up going to be the PC ports. They're not changing anything. And even if you, you play them on PC now, they look way better. Except for maybe 4. Than they did on console because of the how the console cycle was going. They look really good, actually. Um... That's neither here nor there. Charted's overrated. That's that's my in conclusion. Hope you guys like Legend of Zelda, because that's what I'm going to ramble on about in a minute. I'll probably talk to you. I'm going to wait a second here. I'll talk to you more about Legend of Zelda. I need to check my other thing. Because it's crazy town. Love it. I picked them up, except that I already have them on PC, and I'm kind of like, I, I mean, I've bought Resident Evil 4 maybe six times, like GameCube, Wii, PS3, PC. Okay, so four times. Yeah, 
four times, and that's that's too many. That's too many times. 80, 90 times, too many times. That's a a joke. I, love, I know the hard copy thing is tough for me. It's really tough for me. I agree with you, but now everything everything's digital for my Resident Evil, so I don't have a. For Zelda, I collect hard copies, for damn sure. But for Resident Evil, I kind of there are certain entries like my box of Resident Evil 4 and stuff like that. But like the new stuff, eh, eh, eh. maybe it has cool art. No, that's stupid. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. We're moving on. <laughs> as much as I would like to talk about Resident Evil all day, every day. You got the controller? I wish I had the controller. The chainsaw controller, man. I really do. The thing is, I got into the series with like one, the remake on one on a GameCube. I don't have like the old stuff. Moving on to something that's purely self-indulgent. Just purely self-indulgent. My personal history with Legend of Zelda, because the Legend of Zelda to me, uh, and we'll just start with Ocarina of Time, with my goofy little screenshots I have in my Google Doc. That control is really bad, too, by the way. Just It's really bad to hold. Uh, I, was, I was into games, sure. And I had a Genesis and whatever, blah, blah, blah. In 1999, I believe it was, my fr I was at my friend's house, and he's like, okay, here's this game. I got stuck in it, but let's play it. And he was in Ocarina of Time, and he was stuck on the Forest Temple, and he loads it up. And you have to understand, I have to move on, because I'll talk about Resident Evil all day. You have to understand, for me at that time, my gaming history was like Sonic 2, and Vector Man, and... Uh, Pokemon Snap, maybe, Mario Kart, um, Descent on PC, which is space here, and Doom. Like, very limited. So, The Legend of Zelda immediately was like, what the fuck is this? It was my first, I, mean, I borrowed the game from him, I borrowed it for like a year. I just basically stole it from him. Uh, this is my first 3D action adventure game. I didn't know it was like the first for a lot of things before. The first uh, game I played with combat like this. The first game I played with like a, a story, a cohesive like narrative told in this way. First game I played where you can collect, probably where you can shoot arrows, where you can throw bombs. Like this is the first game for me of like everything. Everything about games comes from Ocarina of Time for me. And, and for that reason, I am very very, you know, rose-tinted glasses towards it, because how could I not? This is the game that I played that made me realize, like, games are fucking crazy awesome, and I want to play more of these games. And I still remember getting to the end of the, the Great Deku Tree, first dungeon, and not knowing what to do for the eye, and, and my friend was, happened to be, the friend I borrowed it from, happened to be riding his bike outside, and I'm like, out on my front lawn, like, hey, what do you do with the eye? And so I shoot the eye, he tells me what to do, because for some reason as a kid I didn't understand. And I go to fight the boss, and it, and it was this feeling of like, you take the controller, like, no, this is your game, you have to play it. And like, I don't think I'd played a game that had bosses like that before, it's crazy. I, I, how, how much, and, and to kind of circle back to, uh, to now, I didn't realize how impactful this game was, and how important it was, until I played Demon's Souls. And I realized through playing Demon Souls, how you play that game and any of the Souls games, 
is how I played Ocarina of Time, with this attitude of, I don't know what's around each corner. Now, I, you know, I can play a game, oh, this is the lava level, oh, whatever, this is whatever. I, I know what this is, I know what to do here, oh, this is enemy, let me just dive right in. But with the Souls game, it brought me back to that feeling I had when I was nine, playing Ocarina of Time and seeing a like-like and being like, I don't know what that is, and I'm running away. And I hadn't felt that in years, and that's why my favorite series now is all the Souls games, over The Legend of Zelda, just barely, and it changes day to day. But that's what Zelda was for me. It was so many first, it was, it probably took me months to beat this game, because I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I was wandering around the world. I probably spent an hour just in Hyrule Field running into trees. I mean, discovering all these things, all these firsts, to me, it's so impactful. So, naturally I was hooked on it. And look at it. How could you know? So then it goes to Smash. And I start playing Smash's Link because Link's the man. Also, look at how far we've come. Pretty far. I remember, oh man, Majora's Mask, there's, there's some, so it's a few good stories with this. I remember my friend bought it. He, you know, he got it for his birthday, but he didn't know you needed the expansion pack, so his birthday was ruined. <laughs> That's funny to me. But I bought it I, after release. I remember paying $70, $80 for it, which, uh -huh. Plus the expansion pack that you needed to buy. My my best memory of Majora's Mask is after you collect all the masks, you can you go to the moon. Spoilers, I guess. And you can you can give the masks to these kids. And I think there's three sets of challenges. I'm not sure. I haven't done this in years. Probably 15 years. Uh, and you do the challenges, right? So it's late at night. I finally collect all the masks. I'm 11 or something. Find the collectible masks. I go through and get 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 to the moon. Okay, I got all the masks. I'm gonna get the fierce DD mask. I'm I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I get to the challenges, and there's the one challenge where you're the Goron rolling and you bounce off these things. And I got stuck there for an hour at least. I couldn't do it. I couldn't understand how to do it. I'm frustrated. I don't want to quit the game because of how the game saves. I'd have to do the other challenges again. It's it's like now it's like 11, 12 o'clock, and I'm I'm. 11 years old, you know, I'm supposed to be going to bed, and I'm trying to beat this stupid game. I finally beat the challenges. I finally get the Fierce Deity masks. Mask. And the first thing I do is I go into Majora. I finally see the boss. I never fought the boss before. I was waiting until I got all the masks. I do the transformation. I'm, I'm blown away. Like, this is amazing. I, I can't wait. I decide. I got the mask. I, I've seen it. I'm going to bed. It's like 1 in the morning. Going to fucking bed. I'm a morning person, so... Plus, I think this might have been a school night, maybe? I don't know. Going go to bed. So I saved the game. But I get this thing in the back of my head. I'm going to load up the game and see the mask. I just want to load up the game again, see the mask in my inventory. Now, if you've done this, you know that you don't get the Fierce DD mask unless you beat the game. You have to beat Majora, at least at this time. So I loaded up my save. And after spending hours stuck on the stupid challenges and finally getting it, I didn't have the mask because I didn't beat the game. And and I was like, this was like the closest I've been to tears <laughs> for like the stupidest reason. I had to do the challenges again the next day. And the ironic thing is that fighting Majora with the Fierce Deity mask takes like a minute. All I had to do was spend a minute fighting him. And I would have had the best, but no, I had to stop and save. I'd go to sleep because I'm sleepy time. I don't think I've never collected the masks again. I've 100%ed Ocarina of Time several times, over and over again. I even do it unintentionally, just as I'm playing the game. I've never gone back and 100%ed Majora's Mask because of that. Because of that like traumatic experience, I just can't. I just can't do it anymore. Love the game though. For the longest time, I would say Majora's Mask is my favorite. Now, here's the expansion pack. Now I'm kind of wishy-washy. Then I went to play the Oracle games. Now this was a summer of my life. I never played 2D Zelda, where I go to Oracle, and this is, these are my favorite 2D Zeldas, because they're actually good. Link the Pass is overrated. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. We're gonna move on. Sorry, not sorry. I like these games. They're really good. Definitely play them. They're on the 3DS. They're so, they're a little dated now, but they're so good. They're, and they're made by Capcom of all places. Capcom. Who did this? Crazy. Crazy Capcom. Capcom made this game. They also made, um, Minish Cap. 
And then I went back. After that, I went back and I played the original. I beat the original. I'm not sure what else I played during that time period. I might have played a little bit of two. I did not beat the Adventure of Link till much later. Because, and that was with save states, because good god. Then comes Major, uh, Wind Waker, which is probably my favorite Zelda now, or at least for 3D, because of how it changes things up and how it plays. The HD remaster was phenomenal. And, and this is the problem. Being, I mean, okay, this game came out in, uh, Wind Waker came out in 2001 or 2002, so I was 11 or 12. And I remember before that, printing off screenshots of the game, because this was early 2000s, and taking them to school and being like, look at this new Zelda game. It's, it's going to be really cool. And my friends, who FYI are also 11-ish, oh, I'm not interested in that kitty Zelda game. Stupid Zelda. We're fucking 11, dude. Just play the goddamn cartoon game. Ridiculous. So that, mm, you can go fuck yourself. And, and, and people like it now, which is good. You should have liked it 10 years ago. And the game's phenomenal, but I end up with this collector's edition. I forget how, probably from Nintendo Power, I, I think. And I played through the games again. And also, I had this, which was the pre-order bonus for pre-ordering Wind Waker. Love that to pieces. Finally played through uh, Master Quest, which is awesome. Really weird, but awesome. Guess what? I don't have either of those anymore. Two of the most valuable Zelda pieces that I had. Goodbye. Gone. You moron. And I've seen a gold cart Ocarina of Time and, and I didn't, I didn't have money because I was a kid. These decisions. These decisions I make in my life. Very unfortunate. Get to Wind Waker. Wind Waker is phenomenal. I think it's, it's not perfect, but I do, I love the sailing. That's part to me. I love the sailing and being on the open ocean and fishing and all this bullshit. The, it probably has the best vehicle based combat of any of the Zeldas. You have, cannons and you're fighting these giant it's the one that changed up the most in the, in the same way that twilight princess was very much ocarina of time 2 back to ocarina this was a departure in a very different direction and i love it i mean those those dungeons that were kind of like co-op with a with a buddy that changed how you do things some of the best dungeons i think so, overall the game you just can't escape its beautiful charm Beautiful. Beautiful charm. And around this time I played A Link to the Past, which I think is the most overrated one. But that's kind of my fault for playing it after six other Zelda games. I don't think it's balanced very well, to be frank, but I was playing it on a Game Boy Advance, so... I don't know. It, it, didn't, it didn't strike me why. A particular example is the Ice Tower where you can get hit by an enemy that'll do three hearts to you if you don't have the right tunic. Then you'll fall down a hole. Then you'll lose another heart because you fell down a hole. Then you'll land on something. Then other, it took me like 60 days to get to that stupid... You should have all those games because they're amazing games. And I... I mean, I was young. Right, so I didn't have money. And so I sold a lot of my stuff. A lot of my games I don't have anymore. The late tail end of GameCube era, I started keeping things. But before that, man, I, I mean, I had that, that DDR Mario game. I'm like, yeah, I don't need this anymore. And it's like, fucking keep that, stupid. But no, I don't. And also, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't collect anymore. I have to collect things I want, not as like a collector. I'm just going to buy the dumb shit I want. Like, stupid little plushies because I can't get hung up on all this other stuff because I'm not going to have it. I'm just not going to have it. I'll have the game and that's all I can hope for. I don't even know. It's ridiculous. Minish Cap I, is fine. I think I played Minish Cap on an emulator and that might be why I don't like it as much. I should really revisit. Of all the games I need to revisit um, Minish Cap. The Mario DD, DDR was cool. And we get a Twilight Princess which as I said is Ocarina of Time too. And I liked it at the time, but this was like, this was, I played, I bought uh, Xbox and Gears of War. And then the next week, I bought a Wii and, and Twilight Princess. And Gears of War is an impressive looking game. And Twilight Princess, no. 
Nowhere near that. Even our style, even Wind Waker on GameCube looks better than Twilight Princess. And I, I, I'm not going to say I was hard on this game. It was just, it was so much like Ocarina of Time. So much. Too much. That I, I couldn't, it, w it was like, oh, here, remember this place? Huh? Huh? I'm like, all right, I can't, I can't stand by this. I can't stand by this anymore. It's too much. You're trying too hard. And ironically, that's probably the last good Zelda game we've gotten. Except for Link Between Worlds, which we'll get to. So we got Vandom Hourglass. These DS games, Vandom Hourglass and Spirit, and Spirit Tracks, not very good. Not very good at all. Uh, Spirit Tracks has one new item that's interesting and raises the sand, and that, that's cool. These games aren't very good. These are probably the worst Zelda games, in my opinion. Mainly because of the touch controls, you have to swipe and... Ain't nobody got time for that. We get a Skyward Sword, which is very divisive. And Skyward Sword, while having the best controls for bombs, you can throw them underhand, you can throw them overhand, and having the best controls for arrows and all this other shit, has the worst sword fighting controls. I don't care what anyone says. It's not it's not one to one, which is fine, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work right. You swipe in this game, so you're sword fighting, right? And so when you're sword fighting, you do swing swing. Because you're not a moron. But the game only registers the first swing. The second swing doesn't get registered because Link was doing a canned slice. And then your sword's spinning all over the not to mention the retreading that you have to go through each area and then collect a bunch of garbage. The game struck me as we have this much content, but we have this much area to put it in. And I'm, I like retreading. I like backtracking in like Metroid and all the other Zelda games. This is an, a world that is not connected at all. Completely separate areas. The overworld is a glorified treasure chest. That's right. You have to collect treasure chests twice. You have to find them. Then they get teleported into the hub world of treasure chests. No thank you. Just give me the treasure. Why are you making me do this busy work? The entire game is Legend of Zelda busy work. And it's a big problem because half of it is good. It is really good. But as a Zelda game, no. There are better Zelda games. Called most of them. Not the DS ones. You shouldn't collect. I, I can't collect. I collect garbage. See? Toys. You see how many Pikachus I have. It's a lot. It's, it's frightening. And now, I, as much as I don't necessarily like A Link to the Past that much, it's still good. It's still a good game. It's still a great game. A Link to the World is really good. I like what it tried to do with the items and, and doing them out of order. Of all the Zelda games, I hope Zelda Wii U is like A Link Between Worlds in terms of that. And like, you could just go wherever, you know. Or actually, <laughs> that would be the first Zelda. Make it like the first Zelda, where you can go into the last dungeon first if you know what you're doing. I don't, can you do that in the first? It doesn't matter. Do them in out of order, do them in any order. There shouldn't technically be an order. That was what was really cool about the game. You just stumble upon a place like, oh, alright, I'm here now. I know where this dungeon is. I cannot be here, but I know where it is. Such an interesting take on it, and one of the few handheld games that I like. Um, cause the DS ones are, are garbage. I used to collect things. I don't collect things anymore. What do I collect? Let's see. I say that. I don't collect things anymore. He said surrounded by 20 amiibo. Okay, well maybe I collect some things. But it's for me. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and, and bemoan that I don't have a certain item. These items are for me. They're for me putting up. They're not for, I'm gonna sell this in 30 years or, or like some stupid reason. You gotta collect for you. You can't collect for like some bullshit arbitrary reason that involves someone else. That's all. Let me get to twi uh, Triforce Hero, which I have not played. And actually, I skipped over a couple games in this. The uh, the GameCube Four Swords Adventures is great. Really enjoyed that game. And that's kind of where this comes from. I played the beta for this, or demo, whatever you want to call it, and it's fine. But I don't want to play a Zelda with other people. I don't want to play anything with other people. Except for Resident Evil 6, actually. Funnily enough. <laughs> you gotta collect for yourself. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, oh, I want this so everyone else on my left can be jealous. It's a fucking toy. Just play with the toy, man. It's for you. But back to Triforce Heroes. I'm not, I'm not. 
I'm gonna get it probably when it, I find it on sale for 20 bucks, and I'll play it, but not that great. Not that great, and dust just went everywhere when I did that. There's so much dust in Arizona, it's ridiculous. It, I have to clean this table like, every week. There's a, there's a layer of dust. From where? From what? Where's the dust from? Probably from all my hair. That's probably what it is. But for Wii U Zelda, let's, let's call that with that, because I would like to see, it is going to be a big open world, and who knows what it's going to be with the NX. God forbid we understand that. I want new items, or at least items that are the same items but different, in the same way that Wind Waker had the boomerang that you can uh, select multiple things with, along those lines. I don't want Skyward Swords burst jar bullshit vacuum. I, If you're going to put something like that in it, make it have an interesting use. It's the same thing with Twilight Princess's little top, which is cool, but it you can't really use it for anything. Uh, the Twilight Princess control baton is more interesting and has better uses, I would say. How is so tell me what you think about Triforce Heroes. So I'd like to see new items. I'd like to see the open world. Do it in any order. I don't necessarily care about the story. I'd like to see it move away from Zelda and, and Ganon all the time. Particularly, because the story in Wind Waker, that's why I like it so much, is different. It's got a lot of stuff going on. And for its kitty bullshit, it's some cool ass shit in that game. <laughs> that's way not kitty. Uh, kitty. Kitty, because these are games with like a, a T for teen at most. I mean, come on, chill out, people. What do you, what do you want? I'm chopping off limbs? Come on. But as for other things I'd want for, for Zelda, I don't know. I don't know. I just want them to make a good one. We, since Twilight Princess, we haven't gotten a Zelda game with actual controls that are normal. Just normal controls is all I want. And even that one I played on Wii. So technically, it's been since Wind Waker since I played a fucking 3D Zelda game with an actual controller. That's why I'm so excited. Oh yeah, I have it right here. Boom. Super excited. Finally play this game the way it's meant to be played with a controller. It only took 10 years. Yeah, don't go in opening for That's what I fear, too. Is like, I like the outfits and I like the cheerleading thing. I think that's funny. But I don't want to, I don't know. I might play it with other people. Who knows? It's just like so, it's so exhausting. And without voice chat, which I don't necessarily bemoan a lot of times, it's just, I've used that word a couple times. It, it's just, oh, go stand over here. And then you're just like, hey, 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 until the one person goes over there. I don't know. Uh, together is great. I did play I did play the demo that you play a couple levels, and it was fine. It was good. But it felt like an action puzzle game with other people as opposed to kind of a solitary, almost mystery feeling that I that I like out of. Zelda. I don't know. I'm just. I'm really picky with my Zelda, man. I want. I want Ocarina of Time. Like, if they were to remake one game, screw Ocarina of Time 3D. Actually, remake the game. Actually, remake it with the new engine, or maybe like a retelling. I. I always say I'd love to see um, a game where you play a Sheik during Ocarina of Time, or maybe in some kind of alternate timeline where Link, the timeline where Link doesn't come back. He's just gone, and he dies or something. There, and you play as Sheik. And you have all these different abilities that are more acrobatic, like you can climb up walls and shit, and it's like stealthy. A completely different game, but but not really. You could totally fit that in to Zelda. There is stealth in Zelda. And I think that'd be a lot of fun. It's the same idea I see of uh, like Linkle. That's why I like Linkle. Change it up. Shake it up a little. Do something a little different. That's what was so great about Majora's Mask. Or about Wind Waker. I mean, do something a little different. Don't do Skyward Sword. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing too. Triforce or Four Swords Adventure was a better uh, idea, I feel like, and more fun to play by yourself or with people.
it's upsetting. It's upsetting. That's why I said I'm going to wait for it to be $20 and then uh, use a gift card <laughs> or some shit. Because I just can't. I can't justify it. I want to play it. It's the only Zelda, only technically mainline Zelda game I haven't beaten. Um, I haven't played Crossbow Training, and I haven't played Tingle's Rupee bullshit or the CDI games, but none of those count. And I never played the original Four Swords, but that was like a demo on the. No one cares about that. No one cares about that. You don't want that. You don't want that. See the problem. Skyward Sword's good. It's just not that great, and it's got a lot of problems. Well, there was another problem I forgot to bring up about it. The I I wrote this thing actually like four or five years ago. I wrote this like three thousand word uh, feature for the GameFanatics.com that I still write for them occasionally. Uh, this big old long feature about why Skyward Sword isn't a great Zelda game. It's a great game, but as a Zelda game, no. And it, it's it's Beyond the whole idea that it's so linear and forced into you, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. And sure, it's got a lot of good dungeons, it got, it got a lot of good features and these items, and it controls really well except for the sword fighting. It's just, it's almost too long, it's got like too much crap in it. Not to, it I mean, the world's not interconnected. You basically, every single area of the game, of, of which there are like, what, three? You're going to find all the secrets. There's only one secret bumble wall, bumble wall that you don't need to do. Everything else you're going to see. There's no incentive to explore because they're going to go back there and you're going to find everything because you have to go back there and go the other way. You have to. There are entire areas of, of Ocarina of Time or of Wind Waker, or Wind Waker especially, that you don't even need to go to. There's like seven islands you need to go to out of like 40. That's crazy, but every single square inch of Skyward Sword you have to go to. It makes you. And that's the problem. There's no exploration. There's no sense of that at all. It is just, all right, where do you want me to go today? Okay, I'll go there. That's why I don't like it. Oh, is Demise the giant, the giant guy with the weird toes? I didn't like how to fight him so many times, but he was fine. And the game has a good ending, too. Great ending with the fight with Ganon. Uh, or is it Ganondorf? Does it really matter? Probably not. And it's got a cool story, too. It's got a really good story. It's, it's not a bad game. It's not a bad game at all. Bad game? The DS ones. Bad game. Not good. Not very good. But that's the thing, too. Those are bad Zelda games. Not necessarily bad games. <laughs> They're bad for Zelda games. Bad games. Bad. How's I got there? Yeah, it holds your hand too much. But then, see, it holds your hand too much, and then it adds in uh, equipment upgrades and customization. I'm like, this is really cool. I love this feature. And then, oh, here's a rupee. Did you forget what it is? Well, here's what it is. God. Not to, not to mention that the controls are on the screen the entire time, and you have to turn them off so that you don't have a giant Wiimote on the side of your screen. Like, what the hell's going on here? If you're, what? Baffling. Some of the things they do are just really confusing to me. I don't know why. I don't know why they they do them really. And I actually that made me remember the beginning of Wind Waker. I'm not a huge fan of either. Um, on the island, what is it? Uh, where Ganon is, his island, where you start that. I'm not a huge fan of that. But beyond that, it doesn't hold your hand. It lets you go and sail, or it seems like it does. You actually can't. But like with that game, with Twilight Princess, notorious. Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, notorious for just not letting you do anything. And that's the problem. That was what was so great about Ocarina. The first dungeon is like a five second walk away. And you're already in the thick of it, right? The first dungeon in Skyward Sword is like, what, six hours later? Ridiculous. It's out of control. Out of control. But I'm enjoying talking about Zelda. For damn sure. Oh jeez, what did I do? I always like this screenshot because it was the end of the trailer, um, the reveal trailer for it, I believe. Oh, 
feel like I missed one of the games though. So, Larry, and tell me what your uh, favorite Zelda game is. Overall, and I'll even let you pick like two or three. Um, <laughs> easy going. The good thing about the later games is a heavier focus on story building. Yes, yes. I agree 100%. I mean, even starting with uh, Ocarina, bigger story. And then Majora's Mask, kind of a bigger story. Wind Waker, definitely. Twilight Princess, yes. Skyward Sword, yes. Yes. You can have these stories without strangling the player into submission. I would I would hope. I would hope you can, because that's the game I want to play. Not this weird whatever the fuck. I haven't even looked at this since I got it. I'm glad they put it inside a little box. What was the game that came with the I don't, know, I don't remember. Our grand time of one record. That's the. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, Ocarina of Time. I don't, I don't think you were here for the beginning. Ocarina of Time is my, you know, what got me into gaming, and it was my so many firsts. And then going from that to Majora's Mask, and and I love Majora's Mask. And then going to Wind Waker. Wind Waker does so many things right. It really does. But beyond the art style, just how it unfolds as a story and letting you explore and. It really does feel like you're on, a, on an adventure, particularly with the sailing, because you, like, you'll end on outset, that's outset, right? outset, or windfall. You'll end up on windfall island, and you're like, I don't know what the hell's going on, and you're just kind of, oh, I'll, I'll steal a ride over here, and then we'll get a sail, and it, it, it's like a weird misadventure. It's got some of the best dungeons, oh, but they're so good. Like, the Zelda dungeons are all really pretty good. I, I can't think of a Zelda game where I'm like, that dungeon's kind of like garbage. Um... Can't can't think of one. I mean, some of the the two D ones are kind of forgettable. But I mean, I don't know. That might just be uh, that might just be me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Twilight Princess without um, without motion controls, just with a controller and in HD. It's gonna look a lot better, for sure. And yes, if you don't, if you didn't like Wind Waker's art style. You're a crazy person. You're a psycho. I mean, the game came out when I was... When did it come out? That's just... Came out in 2002? Doesn't matter. I was around 12. And the idea that my fellow 12-year-olds were telling me, oh, this is a kiddie Zelda game, is baffling. Did I say 2012? I meant two if I was saying that. <laughs> yeah, so it came out. Oh, it came out in March. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so around 2002 was when I was on GameFAQs during the whole Zelda bullshit, and everyone's yelling at each other. And we're all children. We're all children yelling about how a game looks childish. The game is beautiful. The game is unbelievably beautiful. It's it's crazy, and the HD one looks so good. It's it, oh my god, it's like a weird buttery statue. Love it. Ridiculous. I don't understand these people. These are these weren't real fans. If you're that upset about the art style, like I'm a big fan of, of Diablo and Diablo two. Big 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 fan. I don't care what art style you make Diablo three in or Diablo four. Just fucking make Diablo for God's sakes. Just do it. As long as the art's well put together, that's all you need to worry about. That's all you need to worry about. But I think we're winding down here. Uh, unless you have any weird questions, you want me to do like a, a weird dance? I'll end the show. Probably won't do the weird dance if you want to dance. I'm right, probably not going to do that. Probably going to look at look at the figure. Looks good. See it. It's pretty good. This will not be opened. This will probably be put over here somewhere. 
Pop a shovel knight. There you go. Ouch, shit. Breaking things. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I mean, I, I I was so in love with Zelda at the time that it could have been any art style. It could have been like stick figures and I've been all over it. Uh, so I was very disheartened to have people be like, this is stupid, blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people just constantly yelling and complaining about it. Um, I remember I went to the, there was a demo for it. It was the same demo that came on the limited edition disc thing that you can get. That was the first dungeon, the, well, the one on Dragon Race Island. And I went to GameStop or EB Games, I think it was at the time. And I played that demo multiple times every week for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I was so excited about it. So excited about getting that game. It, and the demo was timed, so you couldn't beat the dungeon. And I kept getting further and further. And I'm like, one day I'm going to get to it. So fucking good. I was, I was there. I, I had links back. This link right here. And it, yeah, it still kind of makes me a little sad that people were so down on it. I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not like some weird porn thing. It's not an adult game. I don't know why yet. Who cares? Get over it. But yeah, and it also has the best combat, I, I think, of the series. At least the best sword fighting, to me. Uh, at least the best sword fighting. And a good use of items. I mean, these, so many locations in that game are very iconic to me. Like, every single dungeon location is <laughs> just this interesting looking place. As opposed to, I mean, even going back to Skyward Sword, just a place that looks like a meadow. Like, okay. Guess. I guess that's cool. For a game platform. Um, probably PC. Uh, the, of what platform I play the most, PC or PS4 or Wii U. Um, mainly Wii U just because I'm playing a lot of Super Mario Maker right now. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be playing it at all. Well, except for Zelda that came out today. But beyond that, um, no, beyond that it's mostly PC because if it's multi-platform, I can get on PC. If it's not like Bloodborne, I'm, I'm fucking there, you know, on PS4. But beyond that... Yeah, Moonworkers Combat with the with the dodge move that like, blah, blah, blah. yeah, totally awesome, totally awesome. It is the best. It is the best. And that's the thing. Oh, hold on, let me get a drink. <laughs> that's the thing when people talk about what's your dream, uh, what's your dream studio to make a Zelda game. I'm like from software. They basically made a horror Zelda game already with all the Souls games. Just take that formula and make it where you can use little items, make it easier because it's going to be a Zelda game, and just go run loose. It's also a 3D Castlevania game in a way too, which I'm totally down with. Love to see that. Love to see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, it's the animation in that. And the way his like his like eyes look around and, and stuff, the way he he like sidle slidle sidles or whatever on little things, it's so good, it's so good. Wait, his little spin, the smoke clouds, even like the way the bombs explode. Come on, come on, get out of here with your other Zelda games. Psh. Actually, playing through a little bit uh, of um, Majora's Mask 3D, and it's fine. I just can't play a game on a handheld anymore. I just can't get into it. I don't know what it, I want it on my TV. I have a big TV. I want the game on my TV. I don't care if it looks like garbage. Just output to my TV, please. That's what I want the NX to be. I want the NX to be, oh, here's a 3DS game card slot. I'm like, perfect. I can play all these stupid games on my TV now, finally. That's all I want. That's awesome. I keep trying to scroll your Google Doc. That is the coolest fucking thing. I will never not use Google Docs. That is so funny to me. <laughs> Just like, damn it. I want to scroll this. I should make, I should find out a way to do like chat commands to scroll. That'd be funny. Oh man.
scroll. And I like how I didn't even capitalize words. How unprepared I was. I was like, oh shit, I forgot to capitalize all the words. Ruh row. Yeah, the current rumors for NX of it being um like a handheld with a some kind of base or something that outputs to your TV, I'm totally down with 100%. Um, I'm just worried that Nintendo's not going to be able to do it very well, regardless of what it is. That's the only problem I have. Um, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's it's weird. I don't know. I don't know about Nintendo. I love their stuff, but I don't know. They make great games. They should just make great games. They don't need to do hardware. Maybe a handheld though. Yeah. No, that's exactly, that's exactly it. I, I, like Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Fates comes out and I'm like, I would love a new Fire Emblem so much. But I don't want it on my, I don't want, like, I'm like looking like this. It hurts my neck. The, 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 it never feels exactly comfortable in your hands the same way a controller does. It's just not right. It's just not right for me. I, I don't know. It, it's not right. No. I want it on my TV. I don't care if it looks blown up garbage. Like I have a I have a, I have a, a Vita TV, the PlayStation TV that I got for like 20 bucks. And I enjoyed playing a couple of Vita games on my TV. Does it look good? No. Nah. But I like that. I want to play it with a DualShock. I don't want to play it with this garbage controller. That's the thing too. The Wii U actually is a really good system. It's it's got so many good games. Like if you look if you look at how many games good games it has versus the other consoles, it's toe to toe for sure. If not more, but that depends on your taste, so it's variable. But it's toe to toe for sure. And the sales for these games, like with Mario Kart 8 selling five six million on a console that's only sold twelve million, is nuts. It's nuts. They have great game sales to no audience. It's, it's very strange. Yeah, well, the problem is, I hope it's not the Dreamcast, because that was not very good for Sega, o or overall. Um, it's very different from the Dreamcast 2. Uh, I mean, I guess the Dreamcast, yeah, the Wii U did come out first, but it also technically came out last, considering how powerful it is, which is, you know, like the previous generation. It, it's weird. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird thing. It also isn't like the Dreamcast in that they still haven't figured out online Nintendo. It, that's why I'm not I'm cautiously optimistic for NX because who knows what the hell they could be doing with that? What does that even mean? How are how are they putting any of this together? I don't know. It's it's tough. I mean I'm not I don't own a company. I own plush toys. That's what I own. That's what I can take care of. Not a company. But it seems like they've been kind of fumbling around. It seems maybe they're on the right track now. A little bit, but uh who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna move this up. Now nah, we'll go back to one micro. <laughs> Either fix the force or die. It better not be Luke Skywalker. He's not doing too good. With all these new stuff, man. Kind of, uh, they're kind of not doing great. I don't know. It is their last hope. Um, because why would you try again? If you release another console, or handheld console hybrid, whatever, and it performs worse than the, than the Wii U, you basically have to stop and go, now we're third party, or now we're putting all our games on on PC or PS4 only or whatever, you know. They probably wouldn't do PlayStation because they fucked PlayStation and then PlayStation left and fucked them. So there's uh, there's probably a little animosity there, just a little. Uh, they might, they but making them do Xbox or go with Xbox is weird too. So I, I don't I don't know, and I think the idea of a handheld home base is better for them since they've had success with the DS and the lesser extent the 3DS. 
it's just, I don't know. I, I, do I want to play all my Zelda games now as handheld games that I'm playing on my TV? Like, that's kind of disappointing. Who knows if the base station adds any power to where it can output at a higher resolution? Who knows? There's too many questions. And I don't trust Nintendo to have the right answers to that question. Yet. You know? I don't trust them at all. It's unfortunate, but I, I don't. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I don't know if they really have the cash anymore. They're not losing money. But you have to understand, there's certain games like the Wii U Zelda that have been in development for years and years and years. There's research into the NX. There's research into all this handheld mobile stuff. The War Chest is definitely still there, but not as much as it was when the Wii was a phenomenon, you know? And you can't bank on that. Like, that's not, that doesn't look good to investors, obviously, but that also just doesn't look good to a board of directors of your company to be like, well, if it doesn't work, we have a ton of extra money in the bank. That's not, that's not good. What happens if it doesn't work and then we don't have any money in the bank? Like, that's not how you make decisions. So it has to be something that they'd feel confident with that they can make money on that people will buy. And I don't, I don't know if they want to buy it. I mean, the Vita is a very impressive handheld, and regardless of if it had any software support like it should have had, people didn't really want it, and they they kind of just didn't care that much after the first year or two with it. And, and, and who's to say that Nintendo can keep going with that handheld success, especially when they start breaking into mobile as well. Because they start putting their mobile games on the 3DS or, or you know, on the NX, or like, what are they going to do? It's it's very there's a lot of tough decisions going on there and then they have they they have a lot of just weird things like the fact that they announced a new uh, Paper Mario game for the Wii U yesterday is weird that's weird why why are you doing that what is happening over there the fact that they doubled down on Metroid Federation Force which is just a mess is weird it is so weird they are making very strange decisions and some of them are really good decisions and some of them are really bad and it, it it reminds me of the stupid shit sony did with the playstation where it was like oh get a uh, the ps3 get a second job oh it's 599 us dollars just whatever like that's don't say shit like that like why are you what oh my god Getting in the mobile market is a good move. I do agree 100%. Mobile games are garbage. I don't play any mobile games. Recently I started playing uh, Neko Atsume because I can play it in five seconds and cats are cute. But like, that's not a, that's more of just a thing I do for two minutes out of the day. That's not really an exciting game. I've never played any mobile game that was, that captured me in the same way. Even when they port these mobile games to a, a console, it just doesn't feel right. They feel like flash games. They feel cheap and and not just and well, even beyond that, it's the controls. It's the shitty shitty controls <laughs> with these mobile games of like, oh, it's a virtual D-pad. Oh, well, I'll virtually play this game never then. You know, like it, it doesn't it's not a good system to play games with. A virtual button is not the same. I've never had had a controller and been like, oh, I pressed A, but the game didn't read it. Oh, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't read it correctly. Like, but with like a touchpad, even on a laptop or on a touchscreen, I'm like, I'm like tapping, like, oh, I didn't tap there. Well, I tapped there. No, I didn't tap. But I tapped that. You know, it's like this weird disconnect between me as the user and the game, which with a controller does not happen. You know, I'm not playing Dark Souls and being like, oh, I tapped there. Like, no, I know what I did. I pressed the button or I didn't press the button. I'm not at the will of this weird touch panel that doesn't work. If it worked, sure, it doesn't work. And that, it hardly ever works for me. Plus, Angry Birds is garbage. I, just to bring that up, Angry Birds is such a terrible game. It's not even good as a Flash game. It's a terrible game. It's not fun. Screw you, Birds. Also, they're making the Angry Birds movie. They're not coming out in a couple months. What the fuck's going on? Am I a time traveler? What is happening? Ridiculous.
Yeah, I mean, it's nice of them, you know, it's nice of them to put Zelda Wii U out in the first place. But, yeah, I bet a lot of them will come to, you know, like Smash and Mario Kart maybe even, will come to the NX. But the thing is, with with the NX, if it's a handheld that can also be a home console, is it just as powerful as the Wii U? Is it more powerful? I kind of don't. There was a rumor coming that uh, last week that it was... Um, as powerful as an Xbox One. I don't buy that at all. Um, I, I don't think technology is there for them to make an actual device, a handheld device, that could do that. Now, maybe it's as powerful as an Xbox One when you go home and plug it into another thing and it outputs to your TV. Then maybe. And then I'll be interested in these ports. Because that's what worries me. I want to play Zelda Wii U on whatever's going to look best or play best. or you know, like I want to play the best version of it. I don't want to play the shitty version, and that's probably going to be the NX version. But is it? If it's a handheld-only game and it's a step back, I think they shoot themselves in the foot. This thing has to be at least on par with the Wii U in terms of power, performance. Otherwise, it's, it's a waste. Otherwise, why would I buy it, especially if you're porting all the other games from Wii U to it? So it has to, it has to, fund, or it has to function for both audiences of dumb idiots like me who have it and love it, and everyone else in the world. And that's a tough thing to ask. And I think that's maybe their strategy with mobile is put these games on mobile, put something on mobile because you know a Pokemon game on mobile is going to just go crazy. And it only took them 60 years. There were some weird things with that rumor, um, too, with like the 900p thing. It was like weirdly specific. Uh, that, that's why I don't buy that rumor. Nintendo's pretty good at keeping secret. I would assume graphically because, I mean, processing is effectively going to be the same. Well, I mean, okay, well, so pro coming as a PC guy, you can have the best processor. It doesn't really matter. Especially nowadays, games are developed for the GPU. Um, I guess if this is your own console and your controlled environment, you could make it CPU dependent. The rumor also says that it's extremely easy to port games to, which tells me that it is similar to a PC where all, a lot of the rendering is done on the GPU. It doesn't matter, you know, what does the Xbox One have? 8 gigs of RAM? That's fine. That's not a high number. You can get 8 gigs of, of DDR3 RAM for like 20, 25 bucks. It doesn't matter. It's cheap. I, I, in terms of what they're saying, I think what they're saying is it's in terms of the power of the Xbox One, but this is some stupid ass rumor. What kind of metric is that? That doesn't even make sense. That's not even like, that's like saying your car is as fast as a Porsche. But that, that doesn't mean anything. That's like, that actually makes more sense than saying it's like an Xbox One, because it's also dependent on the game and what the game is doing. So it's such a nebulous thing. If it means it has the same specs, that's interesting. That's interesting. And if you can make that handheld, even if the handheld, I don't know, it would have to play to the lower resolution or something. There's a lot of weird questions here. Particularly because, I mean, maybe they could. Maybe they could do it because, um, Computer hardware has already gotten so far ahead of the PS4 and Xbox One that, y you know, you can get a, a GPU, you can get like a, a 780, right, which is almost three years old? And it's like the top tier that came out that year uh, from NVIDIA, and that's better than the Xbox One, that's better than a PS4. So, and that's years old. So technically there's a lot of chips that are better now, it's just... They've never been that company, you know? They've never been that company to be, here's our big hardware. Like, the GameCube was arguably <clears throat> arguably comparable to the uh, to the Xbox, but that was more or less just a thing they did. <laughs> it wasn't, like, it wasn't them trying to do something on purpose. Like, this is, you know, our big graphical thing. I'm losing my voice. That's awesome. <laughs>
Eh, <clears throat> die. I'm gonna die in water. Can't talk anymore. I don't know. I'm very, I'm, I'm so cautiously optimistic. It's more just caustic, um, cautious. Not even optimistic about the annex. <laughs> Yeah, you could be right on that. You could be right on that. The 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 hard drive definitely is a shitty shitty thing they did. I have an external one on mine now. It's the only console I have that has an external hard drive. <laughs> it's my Wii U. It's so stupid. Um uh, because you need it. Especially since I have the um the basic one cuz I was cheap. Everything in my life it, it can be traced back to I was cheap and I should have done something more. But I don't know. I don't know if that killed third-party interest. I think maybe sales did. Maybe the prospect of the PS4 and the Xbox One coming and this not being powerful. They they ported all this garbage on there. I don't know. I I'm trying to imagine a world in which the Wii U was super successful, and I feel like it's a world there where the iPad doesn't exist. Or where, like, the PS4 and the Xbox One didn't sell very well. You know what I mean? Like, if the PS4 and the Xbox One had sold half as much as they've sold, maybe the Wii U, it wouldn't obviously look as much as a failure, and it would have more support. Maybe if the Wii U was a little more powerful, maybe the PS4 and the Xbox One weren't as powerful. It, be, it became, for a split second, Nintendo was there and was like, hey, you can pour stuff over. We're right here with them. We're actually a little better. And then the, a year later goes by and it's like, well, now, Nintendo, you're way the hell over here. And it didn't sell well, and there's no money in it. There's absolutely no money. And you see that with uh, with Ubisoft and Rayman, which is probably not even that big of a seller anyway. But it was an exclusive game, and then, no, now it's not exclusive. Now it's for everything, and, it's, and it got delayed on Wii U just so they could put it out. And it's weird. It's weird shit like that. Like, Ubisoft also put out Watch Dogs on Wii U. Six months later, who is this for? Who the hell is like? It's so weird too. Who is this for? And even when I was like a big, I'm a big GameCube guy, I never bought third-party games. I only had a GameCube, but I pretty much only bought Nintendo games. There were, you know, here and there titles like Time Splitters or something I bought on there. Or, uh, the Hulk game was actually really good. They went on to make Prototype, and uh, it's just they've never had it. They've been losing it for years, and now they have none of it. Like, they straight up have no third party support. And it's just weird. Obviously, the companies are only there for money. That's why they swarmed the Wii. They have to make it something that's comparable with the current system so that, and make it easy to port to if you want these things. Because if it's, if it's so easy to port that it only costs a company like $10,000 and they're going to make that money back, then sure, they'll do it. And then as soon as you start getting more support, it's like a slow thing, but I don't know if they can do it. I'm not a business person. I don't know what the hell is going on. It, it's just, it's not easy. It's not easy. I don't know if they can do it. They've shown zero wherewithal or ability to be able to do that. I do, I do like the Wii U concept. It's, that's very true. But I mean, the PS4, sure, it's a shinier, but I mean, as someone who, a year or so before, like two years before the PS4 came out, I built a gaming PC. And at that point, I was able to play games like they would look on next gen. And you really start to realize, like, holy shit, we've been held back by these consoles. We've been held so far back by them. And now, you get finally with the PS4, and I'm like, oh, this is great. But then you can still play games better on PC. And I understand that's like a stupid argument. You should just play the games. But it is just a PS3 with shiny graphics. The shiny graphics are great. They're great. But where are the games? Like, quite honestly, I'm not excited for Uncharted. Um, <laughs> and Bloodborne's the only PS4 game I was, like, super into. And that's why I bought it. I bought one Xbox One game last year. And I'm only looking forward to one this year, which is Crackdown 3. And then the uh, the one that, where you're fighting with a dragon, that got delayed to the next year. But there's like three games I want on that system. And then on the PS4, 
I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you a PS4 game that's coming out this year I want that's not on PC or on another system or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know. They're selling like hotcakes, but I don't really understand why. And it's good for them, I guess, but I don't understand why. And I, it's weird to me. It's weird to me. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with uh, PlayStation VR, too, which I think is probably not going to do that great. I'm very, I'm very, I'm not very excited for VR at all. I think it's kind of stupid. I've never used it, but I think it's very fucking stupid. But I could be wrong. I do want to try it. I'm very excited to see what kind of numbers they do and what kind of numbers the games do because I'm not showing anything interesting with it. Interesting. <clears throat> I'm not a PlayStation guy. My first PlayStation was PS3. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's late to the party. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's tough, there's a lot of issues, there's a lot of, it's not a, it's not a simple thing, you know, the no issue is black and white, there's a lot of things going on, on both sides, no, on, on any issue, one side isn't right 100%, one side isn't wrong 100% either, it's, it's like, it's so nebulous, especially when business decisions, is, <laughs> I'm gonna get to that in a minute, yeah, it, it's tough, but yeah, I do want to talk about that, um, <laughs> Only interested in VR for the porn. Quite honestly, that is the only interesting thing. Everything else is literally, I can look around right now. I don't want to. I don't want to play the next Legend of Zelda and I have to look around. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want a screen two inches from my eyes. Right? Do you want that? Do you want a screen two inches from your eyes? Does that sound healthy to you? I don't think so. Maybe even if it is. That sounds weird. Do I want to wear a helmet when I'm playing games exclusively? It doesn't. I don't get it. There's nothing shown that doesn't like that. Uh, that zombie crazy taxi game. If you're excited for that game, you're a psychopath. That is a game you show someone for 30 minutes and never play again. There are so many bullshit tech demos with VR that it's it's so frustrating. Show me an actual game I can play, even if it's a six-hour game. Show me any fucking game that I can do with that. It's, oh, here's a drift. And I'm like, I can play that on PC. I don't need to look around like that. I don't, I'm not one of those guys who's on Twitter while I'm playing a game and I'm constantly distracted. I can focus. I don't need a fucking helmet on my head to tell me I need to focus. Okay. And I certainly don't even want to upgrade my PC for a bunch of mini game bullshit garbage. Okay. The only game actually, No Man's Sky would be very cool in VR. That would be cool. But but it doesn't add anything. There is nothing new with that. You are just looking around. Is that it? That sounds so tiring and stupid. And it's such a big gimmick. Oh, I had that in my my thing my uh, thing earlier. The, the DayZ creator said that the VR looks like uh, looks like the Wii. Like it looks like the motions for Wii or something like that. He basically compared VR to to the motion controls for Wii. And I'm like, yes, that that sounds right. That sounds right. Yes. I'll get back to porn too. Because the porn thing is interesting and is arguably, or even not even porn, like even if you want to be like, not talk about porn, just having an interesting experience where you're in a room and you're like watching a play or a cutscene or something. Like I could totally see that where if you're playing, um, let's see, maybe like a Bioshock and, oh, the cutscene started. So you put on the VR helmet and then you can look around and you're, you're part of the cutscene and, and you can move around and look at it as it's happening. And that could be really cool. Like for action games and action moment that you're not playing, that could be cool. Or for something where you're, uh, you could just play Fallout 4, you put it on, and you're just wandering around the world. And it's optional. That's what it has to be. It has to be like a thing for every game that's optional. Assassin's Creed, put it on, and now all the enemies disappear, and you can just wander around ancient Rome. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Have they said anything like that. No. No. But that's what I think is cool about VR, the ex experiences you can do. Not for games. These weird experiences. The implications it has for uh, like doctors in the medical field and stuff like that. That's interesting. This other stuff? No. Why? What? And that is the thing. The price. How much is PlayStation VR going to be? Because what? Oculus is 600. The Vive or whatever is 8 hundred this thing has got to be at least three hundred dollars at least 
It's got an external little power unit. It's a, it, yeah, it's going to be at least $300. Even if it was $300, exactly what you're saying, what kind of support is it going to get? This is a company that already showed they cannot support stuff like that, like with the Move. Now, granted, they're more excited about this than with the Move, but what? They had the whole 30 minutes with the, the PlayStation experience with VR, and it was crazy taxi bullshit. It was a game where you fly, fly around as a bird, which could be cool, but also kind of bullshit. Uh, the game that does have a VR mode that is the, the robots playing mini golf, which is cool. But I'm not going to buy a $300 headset for it. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I said too. It's, this isn't for games. This is, at least not yet. At least not yet. It's not for games. This is something, and I'm so exhausted with VR too, because it's been like six years, it feels like. When did Oculus start happening? Like the Kickstarter was three years ago or something? It's been going on for so long. And it just doesn't seem to end, and it doesn't seem to have anything interesting going on either. Everything's a tech demo, everything's a game I can already play, which maybe is the point. Maybe that's contradictory, right? If every game had something that you could do with VR, that would help you buy a VR headset, but if it's just stuff you can kind of do already, why would you need it? And maybe it is just I need to try it. Maybe it is. That's what everyone says. That's what everyone says. Oh, you have to try. It. You have to try it. And I'm like, I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't need to try the Wii to understand. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. You can play tennis. Like, that's kind of cool. I, I didn't need to play it to understand how that works. And I just don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Not to circle around the same point six times. I don't buy it at all. I don't buy it 100%. This is not going to work right. And and the blind faith and the and the things I keep seeing about it that are people so excited, I don't understand where that's coming from. Like, and that that's me. Like I'm the guy who I want to play a turn-based JRPG that's just grindy and it's just mindless. Like, I'm totally cool playing that. So I don't necessarily want new improvements. I'll play that stupid JRPG for hours. I don't care. Um, but I also like games like The Witness. You know, and and, and I like how John the Blow came out and was like. We can't really do this game in the witness. It doesn't work. Great. Not, not everything works. Even a game that would, looks like it would work. It's stupid VR. It's weird. But the Oculus is $600, or the pre-order was, right? It's $600. And you need a gaming PC. Does not, is it, is the box with Sony's VR a processor? Is it just an output box? Because you're right. If it is a processor, oh, it's going to be more expensive. But if it isn't, it's not going to be as expensive. Because it looks like it could just be like an HDMI splitter kind of thing. I don't buy it. I don't, no, VR is going to, but see, that's the thing. I don't want it to fail, but they're, I feel like they're really jumping the gun with this. This is, this is way too gung ho for something that, that no one, like, is anyone interested in this? Who's interested in this besides the hardcore people? It's not even something, like, I still, oh my god. Yeah, it's $600. Let me pull it up. Let's, let's, let's go, uh, get off my Google Doc. Oh, look at PlayStation doing Google Ads <laughs> for the Oculus. Yes, pre-order for $600. It, you know what it comes with? A controller, an Xbox One controller, and uh, Eve Valkyrie, which is fine, whatever. But man, for $600, and I have to really have a really good PC already? That's crazy. So PlayStation VR, is it going to be $300 and be shit? Because that's going to be bad for everyone. <laughs> That's not going to be good for anyone at all. Other other VR companies are going to be fucked over if the PlayStation VR is underpowered and not very good. It's going to screw up everything. Ridiculous. Which did you pre-order? I don't know, Popular Science. How about none of them? 
Oh man, this is okay. HTC sold a thousand Vive headsets per minute when pre-orders opened. God, what are these people? What do you expect to do with it? You're not gonna be able to do anything. Oh my God, I don't understand people. I don't understand people. Ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need porn for six hundred dollars. <laughs> like I can get the gist of it all without the three D I'm there. I can understand. <laughs> All right, you know it's been fun hanging out. I'm I'm losing my voice slowly for some reason because I apparently I don't know I talk too much today. So I'm gonna kind of call it call it there unless you have anything else to ask or say about VR being bullshit. Um, this is a show I do. I'll just chat with the comments forever long until I can't talk anymore. Um, show I do every Friday at 3 p.m. right here, 3 p.m. Pacific time, which daylight savings time is coming up. Watch out. Watch out. A couple weeks away. And that's it. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Nice talking to you. It was fun. Talking about Zelda and how stupid PlayStation VR is. God. There's so much Kool-Aid there. The Kool-Aid man is dead. So much Kool-Aid has been drunk with VR. The Kool-Aid man is beyond buried. He's just just a broken glass on the ground. Ridiculous. Definitely catch the beginning where it's a fun news jokey thing that's probably really awkward. <laughs> Alright. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I already said that. Oh well.